Well, we're very happy to present uh, this program to the courtesy of the Lasan family and all of us here at SSP TV. It's our pleasure to present this program. Welcome to the Mass for Inspiration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, who is our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Merry Christmas. Today, the Church throughout the world celebrates that great, the greatest miracle, God leaving his heavens taking on our human flesh in order to save us. As we prepare to celebrate this Mass, we take a few moments to acknowledge any sin that we have entered into, confident that we have a God who is loving and merciful and always ready to forgive. Lord Jesus, you are the one announced by the prophets of old. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were born of the sinless Virgin Mary as our Messiah and Lord. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have promised that you will return again with glory and salvation for all your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty, 
Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Receive the honors, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in the gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwell in the land of bloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you at the harvest, as people making merry with dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Today is born our Let the 
heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. They shall exult before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the he shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I proclaim to you God of great joy today a Savior is born for us Christ the Lord Alleluia 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 My sisters and brothers the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria so all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were struck with fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel 
of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas time is all about a story, the most wonderful story ever told. We've just heard the story of Jesus' birth written by the evangelist St. Luke. And so today, rather than some deep theological sermon on the incarnation, God becoming man, I'd rather share with you another story that I think ties it into our celebration and helps us to truly understand the miracle of faith, the profound message of Christmas itself. I have to admit it was first told to me by my brother-in-law, Neil, but it's actually an adaption of a story once told by the late radio broadcaster Paul Harvey in that famous rest of the story segment program that he would have. It was Christmas Eve and Sam looked out the window of his small farmhouse. The snow was swirling down and covering the ground with the whiteness of, of its whiteness. And he could hear the frosty north wind through the window pane. It was very cold, similar sometimes to what we experience in our area. Now Sam was alone. His wife, his children, had left earlier to go to church for the Christmas Eve service in their small rural church. He chose not to go. He didn't believe that God became man. He just didn't make sense to him, and he didn't want to be a hypocrite and pretend. He seldom went with them to church, and he knew that that disappointed his wife very much. And then all of a sudden, he thought, the barn. I forgot about the animals. I've never done that before. What's going on? What in the world is wrong with me? And so he put on his boots and his coat. He pressed the cap that his wife had made for him firmly on his head. He opened the back door and a blast of frigid air sent a shiver through him. He carefully walked down the icy steps across the yard to the barn. With a pull, the large wooden barn door creeped open and Sam walked in. It was almost as cold inside the barn as it was outside. His breath hung in large white clouds in front of him. Sam struck a match and he began to light the two oil heaters that he kept there. He stood around one, rubbing his hands together in the glow. The cow, the mule, seemed to welcome a little bit of that light, that warmth. Sam fed them a special Christmas treat. Soon they were full and warm and ready for the long winter's night's sleep. When Sam opened the barn door and he walked outside, there were snowflakes dancing around him and he remembered that when he was a young boy, he would run around in the snow trying to catch the snowflakes on his tongue. He even had the crazy idea of trying it right then and there, but he knew there was an older neighbor who lived nearby who seemed to know everything about them and what they did and probably was peeking out of the window at him and would think that he's a bit crazy. Now as Sam walked back to his farmhouse, the snow crunched under his feet. He noticed that some sparrows that were perched on the bare limbs of a pear tree. The bitter wind ruffled the feathers of these small birds. They seemed almost frozen to the limb. Other sparrows had fallen to the ground and they were flopping around there, and Sam knew that they would all die without some food and some shelter. So he thought to himself, poor little sparrows, if only I could help you. And so he walked slowly towards them. I know I put you, I could put you in the barn. You'll be safe, you'll be warm there. So he tried to catch the birds, but they were afraid of him because he was so big. They would not allow him to get close enough to catch them. 
They didn't understand that he was only trying to help them, to rescue them. If only I could become one of them, then I could tell them. Then I could show them what to do. I could lead them to safety and to sh shelter. Suddenly, the air seemed alive with music. The bells from that church steeple were echoing throughout that night, sounding the arrival of Christmas. Sam felt his heart strangely warmed. He stood there watching the birds, the bells pealing in his ears, and for the first time, he began to truly understand the miracle and the message of Christmas. Warm tears began to flow down his cheeks and he knelt in the snow and prayed. Oh Lord, now I think I understand. In the Christ child, you became one of us. It was the only way. We were like those cold, shivering, hungry sparrows. You became one of us to save us, to show us the way, just like I wanted to become like one of those sparrows to help them. Forgive me, I did not understand. Now I will follow you into the warmth and the shelter of the barn. Sam looked up and turned at the sparrows. He hated to leave them like this. Christ child, help me to know what to do. And Sam was given an idea, an answer to his Christmas prayer. He went into the barn, came out with a sack of seed. He threw some seed onto the snow and made a trail right into the barn. And then he hid and he watched from a distance. Slowly, one sparrow flew to the seed and began to eat, then another and another. Soon all the sparrows had eaten their way right into the barn. Sam quickly closed the barn door and peeped through the cracks in the barn. The birds seemed frightened and confused at first, but they soon soared to the barn's highest rafters. They perched there full and warm, and Sam smiled. The people in that small rural church were softly singing Silent Night. Suddenly there was a blast of cold air from the back of the church. Everyone turned around and there was Sam with a radiant smile on his face, walking down the main aisle, looking for his family. He found them, he entered the pew and he gathered them in his arms and then he began to sing louder than anyone else. Sam discovered with the help of those sparrows the true meaning of what Christmas is all about. God so loved us that he left his heavens and he came to the earth in the person of Jesus to save us when we were lost, when we were confused, when we were spiritually hungry, when we were cold. He knew that we could not save ourselves. My friends, especially those watching this broadcast, the Christmas story continues in our day. Jesus is born again each day to help us to save us when we're lost and we're alone. If only our heart is open to receive him. May we discover this truth in our lives and know and experience his love today and throughout this new year, 2024. The name of all of the parishioners of St. John Bosco Parish, Father Sadir, Father Stephen, Father Ed, Father Pat, Deacon Maurice, our entire staff, myself, I wanna wish all of you and your families a wonderful Christmas and our prayer is a simple one, that you might truly be open to the Christ child, born in that simple manger, that you might never forget that Jesus indeed loves you as he loves me, so much 
that he became like one of us, that we might become like him. May you have the merriest of all Christmases. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Even where Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. Rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come, amen. Gathered together as God's holy people, we now present to a loving Father our particular needs and intentions. We pray for the church, for the world, and for those who have asked us to pray for them today. The church leaders will re reveal the light of Christ by the way they live. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the leaders of the nations of the world will do all in their power to bring peace on earth and end the war in Ukraine and Gaza. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will come to show the love we have for the child Jesus through our love for one another, especially for those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the lonely, the sorrowful, and the grieving may find consolation by laying their cares at the feet of the child Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, the members of his church, will offer the child Jesus the gift he most earnestly desires, the gift of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may come to realize the true spirit of Christmas lies in giving not in receiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all travelers by land, air, or sea, for those separated from loved ones during the holidays by distance or strained relationships, and for those serving in the military, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Mary Beth Miarelli, for whom this Mass is offered, that they might find might enjoy the friendship of the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in our hearts and in which now recall in silence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our heavenly Father, hear these prayers that we have announced and all those prayers that are deep within our heart and grant them if they are according to your will and for our spiritual benefit, for they have been made through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus lay down his 
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and the archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Save us, Savior. By your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your family, the church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, bishops, clergy, religious everywhere. Remember Mary Beth Murelli, for whom this Mass is offered, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Holy Apostles, with St. John Bosco, and all women and men, saints and martyrs who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, free us from sin. Save us from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin today, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And now let us exchange the sign of peace, God's love to one another and Christmas greetings. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those come to his table saying, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, 
Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to know, to love, and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. In the name of the parishioners of Sacred Heart of Jesus Church and St. John Bosco Church, we wish all of you a very holy, very happy Christmas and a healthy new year. God bless you.
heaven and nature sing and have a night.